Yeah, hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial series where we want to now animate the dynamic layout here that we created with pins and boxes in the first part. Again, the idea of what we created so far is that if we change this text here, the entire layout updates accordingly. But so far, this is not animated yet. Now, now we want to animate all of this with keyframes. So what we've used so far are the pins of this dynamic layout here and a box that we created around these pins and parenting to connect this text to this text. And now let's add some animation. So we want this box to come from the middle and for animating those elements in the effect controls of the box layers, you have here this box effect. And this is not just good for adding ma margins as we did last time, but also for animating things. So now we want to animate this with the scale parameter here and with this scale parameter, you can change the size of the box and you can see that those parameters here are percentages. This means 100% means 100% of the box around all those pins. And the great thing is, so since you don't have pixel values here, when the box size changes, everything is still as you want it to be. Yeah? Same is also for anchor and offset. So you can say offset X 100%, which means the box moves 100% of the box size to the right. These are the kinds of animations you can do. And in practice, it looks like this. We say, for example, well, at the end, we have here a Y scale of 100% at this point in time but at this point in time, we want it uh, to be zero. Uh, so it turns into a line and we have now this nice, nice animation here. And say at this point, let's also set a keyframe for the X scale and say at the very beginning, it should have an X scale of zero. And now you have a line that first grows and then turns into a box. Maybe let's to see better what we are doing. Let's hide all those pins since we don't need to see them at the moment. By the way, if you want to make your project a bit more clean, here you can see we have all those pin layers in our composition. Pin layers are shy by default, which means that you can easily hide them also here in the timeline by clicking the shy button. Okay, so now our text nicely animates in and you can see that the Mamo World text already moves with it. And now of course we want all the other content to be hidden behind this line. So it should not be uh, visible here outside of it. This means for all those LL other elements we need a matte layer and for this we can simply use a copy of the box. So we duplicate command D our box layer and in the duplicate we set the fill to white and call it matte. And now we use this matte layer and move it right above our title. Make sure to really move it above the title and not above those pins here that are not visible at the moment because we shied them. Yeah, move them here above the title. And now for the title, we set the track mat to alpha mat. Now you can see that the mat has disappeared and also that when the line goes over our main text, the main text is disappearing. So we do the same for those other, other layers here. So let's first use here the dynamic layout for our IA text, the subtitle text. We duplicate our mat, move it right above the subtitle, set for the subtitle the track mat to alpha mat. Again, you can see this one disappears now too. And now this logo actually consists of two layers. We have here this illustrator file and we have here this white solid behind it that fills the white part of the image actually. And so for both of them, we need a mat too. So we again, duplicate the mat two times, move one mat about the above the solid, one mat about our icon. And again, set the track mat modes to alpha mat. And now you can see this is our current result. So for the Mamo world, we want to keep it simple. And let's say it should just at some point in time here appear. And now you could have the idea that those texts maybe should also, when they become visible, they should slide in from the side, for example, yeah? So let's do this too. So we select our title text and keyframe it. So at, let's say at this point in time, it should maybe start animating. I set a position keyframe uh, and it should end like here maybe. And it should start way outside. So we move it way outside like this. And you can see already a problem that is occurring now. Uh, and this is okay, when this text slides in, the box grows with it, which we in this case do not want. Yeah? So one thing you have to understand for this, or the only thing you have to understand for this, is that we have two kinds of pins. We've got moving pins and current time pins. And current time pins don't move with our layer, but have only one time, the current time, at which they measure the size of this box. And we actually want to say all our pins just uh, measure the location of this layer that you are connected to 
at the point in time when our entire animate in things are done. So let's say at this point in time here we want uh, the pins to measure the location of their mother layer. So you can toggle this anytime later by clicking this button. If you click it for all selected pins it will set them to current time pins and make the current point in time here the time where they measure the location. And if you shift click it it will remove this again. So um, the great thing is you don't need to select pins uh, explicitly. I mean we can do this, we can show our pins and say these pins here should be current time pins at this current point in time. And now if you take a look at them, they've got this marker pin time, which says this is the point in time where they should be uh, the current time. Yeah? We want this to, have the, the, to be the case here actually for all our pins, so we can just say Command A to select all layers. This does not just uh, select the pins, but all layers. But this function here ignores all layers except the pins, so we can just select really all of them and then say please create a pin time here. And now all our pins have this marker. And again, if you want to get rid of it, you can shift click on this and it will disappear. Okay, and now you can see if we play our animation that the pins are not moving anymore with our box text here because they only measure the size of their parent layer at this point in time. Okay, so finally let's hide our pins again and also add an animation to those other texts here. So this text should also shy our pins. This text should, like our title, be in the final location around here and start from way out of frame. And same also for this icon here. The final location should actually start here. And let's say we, this one should come from the left. Or maybe the subtitle also should come from the left. And this is what our final result looks like. Okay, so to summarize animations, if you want to animate boxes or lines, a great way of doing it is using in their effect control, those scale parameters here, or also the offset and anchor. And ah, I didn't explain this, so um, for the anchor it is such that you can decide from which point it should scale or grow. So if we move the anchor to 100, 100 for example, you can see that it starts from the bottom. It first starts here from only one side and then it grows from the bottom up instead from the center. Yeah, So here you can control from which location it of the origin of the final box size, so to speak, the scale happens. So we have lots of different variations here. And with keyframing those parameters, you can animate lines and boxes very easily. And then if you want to start moving your mother layers, so the layers that your pins are connected to, please make sure you use uh, not moving pins, but current time pins, such that the pins do not move with your layers, and you can toggle between moving and current time pins anytime by selecting the pins and clicking or shift clicking this button here. That's it for this overview tutorial. We have some more tutorials that explain you a few more complex examples to get you used to this entire concept. I hope you got the basics by now. Again, I'm Matthias from mamoworld.com, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.